So hi, I'm Tig from Urban Forest Metrics, and we're going to go over mapping in the tree inventory system. Uh, we went over the very basics, basics of mapping when we talked about doing the basic inventory and walking down a street and adding trees. What we did was we essentially added geolocations, and we did that by one of a couple methods, by using the GPS or by using our map system called Touch Locate, where you can just touch a map and it will locate the latitude and longitude. We're going to go into a little bit more detail about that, in particular show you how to kind of set up the map so you're in the right location when you start off. And we're also going to talk about what you can do with the mapping data afterwards. Um, so there's a few more details that might be worth going into. So we'll, we'll jump right in. So here we are in my computer, and I'll show this on the computer because oftentimes when people are doing mapping stuff, especially when they're taking that data and doing something with the data, they'll often be using a computer. Um, and it will be very similar when we are talking about the Urban Forest Metrics interface. It'll be pretty much identical to the iPad or iPhone if you're using that out in the field. The one difference being that the iPad and iPhone use a touch interface, whereas with a computer you're using a computer and mouse. And there might be a couple little things I'll point out as differences because of that. So we'll jump right in. Here we are on my screen. We have this inventory that we made just a couple minutes ago. Um, it has this single tree in it. I'm going to go ahead and add a new tree, give it a species and a DBH, and we're going to go ahead and use touch locate. You're going to see a map that pops up where we last left off. Now we could have flown to Hawaii and clicked on this and it would still just show this location right here um, because we haven't moved the default location and that means that sometimes between projects you're going to wind up in the wrong place when you first open this up there's a good reason behind that it's very useful to have it stay in a location and not follow you around because you might be uh, using the map to examine a particular set of trees where you are not present at the time um, so if we do need to move to a new location, what we would do is you know, go to the tree in the database that we wanted to go to, and then we'd probably click on this button, Center on Tree. So now it just centered on the particular tree we're on, this tree number two. If I go to Touch Locate, you see how we're at tree number two. Now, what happens if you're starting a new inventory and there are no trees, there are no geolocations. How do you get the map to show up in the right place? Well, that's you know, it's pretty easy to trick. What we would do is we would go ahead and you know, create our first tree. Here we're creating our sixth tree, but let's say this is our first tree. And we would probably just click the GPS locate button. If we're on a Mac, or I'm sorry, if we're on an iPad or an iPhone, it has a GPS chip, so it'll just figure out where we are, put in that location, and we would have our first location. And then we could go to touch locate and click on that, you know, go to this tree button. Um, now I'm on a computer and computers typically don't have GPS chips. So um, that wouldn't be, you know, a, a, a good way of doing it. So instead I'm gonna go to one of these trees that already has a location. I'm gonna go to touch locate. I went to tree number four. I'm gonna center on this location. Um, the, uh, if I'm on a computer and I want to, um, put in a, a, a latitude and longitude that I want to make my initial location, what I can do is I can look up a latitude and longitude. I can do that on Google maps, uh, just on the internet. And I can actually just type it in, uh, to the latitude and longitude fields here and then go to touch locate and click center on tree. So one way or another, uh, it's usually pretty easy because you're off there in the field and you just click on the GPS button, it gives you that initial location. You click this button center on tree and you're all set. Another thing I can do when I'm off with my mobile device out in the field is I can just click on the center on my geolocation button and that's gonna use your GPS chip, figure out where you are and bring the map right there. So it's pretty simple. Um, but sometimes people are confused in the beginning 
when the map shows up and it's not where they are. And they're like, shouldn't this be where I am? But that's deliberate. So that's how you get to the right place in the beginning. Now, a couple other things. When you are here, I'm gonna go ahead, you may notice that it's only showing tree number four. That's because that's the only tree we selected. When we selected tree number four, it made that our one tree in our found set. Now, if I choose tree number three, that's gonna be our only tree in our found set. So it's just gonna map tree number three. Now, if I am to do a search, for a kind of tree. Like for instance, I might click on the menu and go to the find mode. It'll show me all of these little magnifying glasses. And I can select a set of criteria to search among these trees. For instance, in DBH, I might say, show me all the trees whose DBH is less than 16. Well, that shows me four trees. Um, and when I go to touch locate, it's actually three trees. Um, it shows me those three trees. Um, that's a way that you can do kind of a quick and dirty analysis. You can say, show me all of the elms that are greater than eight inches to have a certain health condition. Um, all of these criteria can be searched all at the same time. It's a really powerful feature to be able to create these custom maps. Um, when I go to the map, I can move it around manually. Like you see, I just grab the map and I click and I hold and I, and I uh, move it around. And on the iPad or iPhone, I can do the same thing. There is a difference on the iPad and iPhone where the way that they work is in order to interact with the map with these gestures, like dragging it around, I have to first click on the map once. So if I click on the touch locate uh, button here on my Mac. I have to click the map once and then I can drag it around. That's just a little difference. It has to select the map and then you can do the gestures. Now if I click the map again, it's going to attempt to relocate my current tree to where I clicked. So you're actually going to change the latitude and longitude. And you may or may not want to do that. Um, there was another couple gestures we should go over, and that is the, the pinching and the spreading. Pinching and spreading on the screen with your finger is zooming. You go in and out by using those gestures. So here we are on my screen. I can go in and out, zooming in and out. Now on the computer, you use the scroll wheel to do that, to go in and out on the iPad or iPhone, you use the pinch and spread gestures. Again, once you click the map for the first time so that the system knows you're, you've selected that map in, with which to interact, then you can do all these gestures. Moving around, pinching, zooming, and touching the map to relocate a tree to that particular latitude and longitude. So that's how we get information in fiddle with the geolocations. Now, when we want to uh, look at information, we want to use the information, you know, manipulate it, make reports, make maps, that kind of thing. Um, there's a couple things we can do. One is we have this touch locate map, which is itself a useful map. It's, it's what we call our working map. It will let us look at the trees and move it around, and it itself is a pretty useful mapping system. Um, and we can even, if I go into Touch Locate, you'll see that there's a Settings tab, and that will allow us to change the settings. Right now it's colored by condition. We can make that colored by uh, risk rating or one of these other factors. We can make it uh, labeled not by tag number, but by species. And when I go to the Touch Locate again, we'll see instead of the numbers, we have the name of the species. Um, so uh, that's oftentimes a useful way of just doing a quick and dirty working map. But if I wanted to present a map to like put up on the web or for a big report, what I'd probably do is I'd export the information and open it up in a mapping program. And there are different mapping programs. Different communities use different mapping programs. Some that are more sophisticated will use something called ArcGIS or a GIS system. And that's very complicated. It takes a lot of training to learn how to use 
and is often associated with larger public works departments. Um, and we can get a layer of this information here out that can be digested by your GIS system. Or we can use that same format that we output here to put into any number of easy to use map systems that are free and available on the web. And I'll show you a couple of those. First, I'm gonna show you how to get this map information out of the system. We will go ahead and click on touch locate. And I'm gonna click on the export tab. And there's this button, it says export to KML. Now, KML is the open data format for mapping. It's kind of like HTML. It's just a file format that everyone uses. Um, and I can choose all trees or just my found set. Remember, my found set are the trees that I'm looking at at the moment. Maybe I did a search and I searched for a particular kind of trees, so I have a subset of my trees in my found set. Or I might have all of my trees. Anyway, I'm going to put in all trees. I'm going to go ahead and click on export to HTML. I'm sorry, KML, and I'm going to type in my file. That's going to be the title of my file that I'm creating. Now that just saved a KML file. I'm going to go ahead and find it in my documents folder, which is where it will locate it. And I'm just going to double click on it. Now on my computer, I have a mapping program called Google Earth. It's free. You can download it. And it's really easy to use and it's free. That's you know pretty charming. So. It's already opened it up, and if I zoom in, I can see these trees. In fact, it's interactive. I can touch the tree, and it will show me the information that I have in there. And this is great, because I can use this to make a, a particular map. I can zoom in and out. I can change my aspect by spinning around. I can um, do all sorts of you know, angle type stuff to get the right view, the right zoom, the right aspect to create a really nice map. And it has very good base imagery. That's the picture behind that. So um, that's one thing you can do. And you can take screenshots of this in order to bring a map into a document you're creating. But one of the really cool things that people like to do is they like to take this KML information and put it up on the web so that you can have an online map that can either go on your website or you can just send a link to someone else who doesn't have a mapping program on the computer. And we do that by using that same KML file. I'm gonna go ahead and open up a browser and we're just going to go to maps.google.com. Um, this is you know a free map service that Google uses. Um, I can go to the little menu icon here and there's a section that says your places. And there, there's a little maps tab. And at the bottom, it'll say create map. So I've just gone to this map section, said create map. There's a little import link. I click on that and it says, what do you want to import? Well, I'm going to go over to my uh, KML file. Let's see, where was that? Oh, it was my documents folder. There it is. And I just drag and drop it on there. And now it's creating an online map at Google. And here it is, here's a street map. I'm gonna change the base map from street map to the photo like we were seeing before. And I can zoom in and this is also interactive. I can click on it and it will show me the information about that tree. But what's cool about this is this is something that exists on the web and I can send people a link to it. I click the share button here and I can title it some random name and enable it to be shared, make it public, and just press copy link. And now I'm going to create a new email and just paste it in there. There's my link. And I can send it to whomever I want to send it to. Here's the map. And there you go. All done. Um, now, one of the reasons why we use KML is because it's the open format and there's constantly new things like this being developed by different companies. So it's important to have a, an open format that everyone uses so that when you know, uh, Microsoft comes off with something new or Apple or some new mapping company, um, you can use it because you can always get out the information in you, from your system into that system. And if you have 
uh, a public works department or someone who has a very complex GIS system, and they say, they say the words, we would like to have a layer of that information. What that means is essentially they want the KML file so they can import it into their system as its own individual layer of trees. And that is mapping on urban forest metrics. Now we do have a section for mapping on our website. If you have other questions, you feel free to go to our website at forestmetrics.com and forestmetrics has an X on the end. Go to the arboriculture section and there's a mapping subsection of that. And we have a couple white papers and additional things that you can see there. Um, and we also have contact information. And if you have questions, um, feel free to contact us and we'll help you out. Thanks for watching. <laughs>